Welcome everyone to another Monday night call. I am Christine Drummond and it's with great honor that I welcome our gorgeous leader, Linda Ebenen, to the call tonight. Linda is the dream keeper, the queen dream keeper, the visionary, the one that has all these amazing um, ideas and um, sleepless nights trying to figure out <laughs> how, she, how she can create you know, so much momentum and hype and more fun for all of us. And I'm sure you'll all uh, appreciate and agree that Linda always knows what to say at the right time, always. Like you can go to her and she just knows what to say. And she's one of my greatest friends. And I just love that we get to be on this journey together. And we have someone at the helm of leadership that just you know, is just someone we can aspire to be like. And um, Linda, I just love that, you know, you are steering this team to bigger and better things all the time. You have the biggest servant, hugest heart of anyone that I know. You're always just thinking of ways to, you know, help the team. It's always, always about the team and how we can help people and, and help people rise. So, Take it away, beautiful. We are ready oh my for gosh. Linderisms. What Linderisms have you got for us tonight? <laughs> oh, I love you, Drummo. What, a, what an honour it is to be here. I've even put some gloss on and done my hair for the first time. If you've been catching it in my Zooms lately, this, to, tonight is the first time I've done my hair for a long time. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. And um, when I was thinking about what to, to cover... Joel and I had um, a few messages during the week. And one of my favorite topics always is to come back to living your life by design, living life by your values. And to be honest, I never even knew this existed. I just thought you just, you get up, you eat, you go to work and, you know, you save enough one day for a holiday and you have a nice life with your family but I was always ambitious and I used to think that I wasn't one of those people that you would have to work really, really, really hard and sacrifice a lot to gain the greater things in life, what I call the masterpiece life. And what I found to be true is it's not like that at all, that each and every one of us can choose um, a life by design right now. And would you agree in, in the time that we've got to cover every, who's got some goals written out? I know this is a super personal development team. So who's got their goals written out? I'm, I'm on speak of you because I love awesome. And if you didn't, if I gave you three minutes to tell me the top five things that are most important to you in life, you'd be able to write them in 30 seconds. Even if I gave you 30 minutes, you'd still be able to write down the five to six things that you um, value the most, that are the most important thing. Would you also agree that we're, this is kind of, this introspection, this um, awakening is kind of being um, not forced, it's kind of coming to a head for a lot of us right now about what really matters. Yeah, a lot of the distractions have been taken away and we're sitting in more time and space in our own homes more than ever before. We're really in unprecedented times. And so the gift to me in this is thinking about, I'm all about quality questions. If I couldn't fail, if I have a magic wand and I can design my perfect life, what am I doing? Who am I spending time with? What kind of things are we creating? What kind of um, things are we enjoying? Who am I surrounded by? You know, what kind of impact um, am I seeing? And what kind of daily emotions and values am I embodying and living by? Really great questions to ask. And so let me think about this. With the goals that you've got, if you've got a pen, I, you're such great note takers. If you've got a pen, I want you to think about the thing that you've written. Most of us in goals, we write things. It's either a milestone, you know, a money amount or a thing. 
and we write those things down, would you agree? Because we perceive that it's going to make us feel different. Really think about that. Can you guys, if you would, um, just in the chat box, because I really want this to be interactive. I'm, I'm here to serve you. You've shown up. So like, let's go for this, right? Put, if you would, in the chat box, some of your things, the top three one-year goals. I'd love to know about them. The things that are the most important to you. And I'll just start reading some of them out. This is the interactive part. Now would be a good time. <laughs> You're busy beavers writing. Okay, here's one. Family. Is that it? Joel's the only one. <laughs> okay, here they come. They always flood in. Help mamas stay home with their bubs. Reach self-qualified SC family. Come on, guys. There's got to be more than that. I need to know these. I want you to. I want you to understand the importance of this. Retire my hubby. Give me some more. What's what else is in your top three one-year goals? And by the way, if you're not crystal clear on these and obsessed with these, other people are in the driver's seat of your life. Other people are every single day sucking up your time and attention and focus. Help mum stay at home. Well, peace, compassion, happiness, trying financial freedom, teaching yoga, being at the ocean, being healthy, improve surfing, improve people um, know who I am, family and not to live week to week, finding gratitude and self-love. See how some people, um, what they don't want is actually more important than what they do want. So they don't want to live week to week. That's my husband. That's an away values person. Does that make sense? No, not good or bad or right or wrong. They're going to talk in a different language there. So right now that is way more important than going after, you know, a Fiji holiday. It's like I want to be out of the pain of financial stress every single week, right? That would be a great start. So here's the thing. Would you agree and can you see on your list that what, what you're actually writing down there is the feeling that that's going to give you, that you perceive it's going to give you? So what feeling is it going to give you to not be living week to week with financial stress? What's the feeling you're after? What's the feeling for um, like being a QSSC? What's the feeling you're really after, Barbie? What's the emotion that you're really after? Passion, joy, freedom. Now you're getting it. Joy. For me, pride comes up a lot. You know, that sense of achievement of I did it. You know, I want to make me proud. I want to make the kids proud. I want to make my husband proud. That's nearly always the number one banner there. He's the one I want to impress the most. Me, first and foremost. Finally, I'm on my list. And then him. Happiness and calmness, joy, elation, vibrance, pride. Get how your goals are vehicles. They're literally like a car that takes you. It's who you become on the way to the goal. And it's the feeling you believe that you're going to have when you get there. Does it make sense? So all of this is a, it's an emotional game. So here's my question. Are you free to live these emotions every single day if you prioritize them and if you choose and if you schedule them? Can you feel joy? Can you create a joy menu? Can you literally schedule joy time? Can you schedule peace and calmness? Can you schedule um, feeling supported and connected? Can you schedule, um, what are some of the other ones? Getting a new house, getting um, back your health, having the biggest earning year so far. What will that emotion give you the most, Joel? Having your biggest earning year so far. Because I look at you doing that 75 hard thing 
that I wouldn't do in a million years up at 4.36 every morning taking that photo. And I go, I don't know how he does that. I would never do that. That is like punishment to me. It's not joy or pride. I love the idea of it, but it's not going to be my vehicle for pride. Does this make sense? But I'm, I'm here going, you should be the proudest guy on the planet if you never earned another cent. What I see you in your discipline, right? Maybe that's a different word. Maybe Joel's got, oh, no, no, that's easy. It's easy to be disciplined with a cent. That's easy. Can you see how our voids, the things that we perceive we're missing in life, become our values? If I feel like I've got achievement handled or I've got significance handled or I've got connection handled or I've got pride handled, I'm going to want to bring about a different part of me that I often see in others, I admire and respect in others. So stick with me. Um, when I look at Joel doing that, I go, oh, I lack discipline. Oh, what would life be like if I was really freaking disciplined? Oh, my God, I've got my fuel of boldness here. I've got my fuel of this and this and this. What if I add discipline in there? That would be amazing. That would be life-changing. For some of you, what if you were to add fun? What if what you are actually really after is fun? You, you've said, I'm going to take up salsa lessons. You know, I'm going to travel to, um, you know, I've always wanted to go to Bora Bora. Why? Okay, what feeling will that give me? Right? I always go to the feeling, not the thing. And then guess what? You can choose to feel the thing any moment. Now, that sounds really basic. But right now, is this important to remember? We all know intellectually that we get to choose the value and choose the emotion moment to moment. We get to choose how we react. We get to choose our respond ability, responsibility on how we perceive and the message that we attach to things. Some people are creating um, disempowering meanings right now. This has been taken away. This has been taken away. This rule is ridiculous. That is absurd. You know, and, and um, if you stay focused on the things that you can't control, you will be living in constant anxiety and fear pretty much because you're always worried about the things that you can't control. When you can come back to you being in the, the driver's seat and you're so clear every single day, clarity to me is one of the most powerful things that changed my life of what do I really want? And why do I really want that, Linda? What's the real why going on here? Oh, yeah, because that's going to grow me to a huge level. And if, if that grows me beyond that, well, that's where I become more and more unshakable. And all these stresses in life will affect me less and less. And I'll be quicker to get back to my centre and stay unshakable. And I can choose more joy and I can choose more love and I can choose more connection and I can choose more uh, intelligence and peace and flexibility and, you know, I'll get there quicker. Does this make sense? So what I want to do with our remaining time, I've, I've kind of set up maybe eight hours worth of values and goals teaching. <laughs> And maybe basic scheduling in about, what if, you know, 15, 16 minutes. But you are a smart lot. And so who's with me? Are we okay? We're all doing okay. I haven't confused you too much. You just get that the name of the game is you choosing your emotional state. So for me, what I'm really doing in my calendar is I'm pre-choosing and predetermining my life by how I want to feel. How much better does that sound instead of a life of reaction that other people can come in and take over at any moment? You can just receive a message with bad news and it can take out your day. You know, someone can just come to the door and hijack, you know, your, your two to three hours. Um, you know, the news can take you off on a tangent. Who's feeling that at the moment? Like, 
for God's sake. So life by, by design to me is being very, very clear on what I want and most importantly, the what is great, but it's the why. Why do you really want that? That's your super fuel. That's your rocket fuel is why. It's not the goal. It's who we become on the way to the goal. So if I was interviewing Joel, I'd, I'd be saying, who have you become in this 75 heart? Who, Christine, who have you become in this 75 heart? These two choose insane things. Like they're insane. But they get so much reward out of their insanity by making us all go, they're doing what? Right? It's so, like, I'm in awe of them because there's so many parts of me that goes, oh, I could never do that on day two. I exercise today. I'm so embarrassing at exercising. But I finally did some exercise yesterday. And I'm walking around like a robot because I'm so sore from this 29-minute, you know, do this for 20 and it's got the counter to keep me going. And, like, I, it is pitiful. It's pitiful. But... I'm determined that I'm not going to keep being the person this sore when I exercise every, like, once every four months. It's not good enough anymore. I'm sick of myself. So one of my favourite quotes by Elizabeth Gilbert is, people only really transform when you get so sick of your own BS. You get so sick of all the stories of why you're here and why you're not here. I really want to be here and here's all my stories of why I'm not yet. Okay? And those stories can propel you or they can completely keep you paralyzed right where you are. It's all a story and you get to choose the story. You get to change it at any moment. So one of my favorite ways is change the story. And so I really want this get very, very clear on why you want it and then schedule it. Cause the third part is where most people don't do it. It stays on the vision board. It stays as a wish and a hope and a dream. It stays as a journal note. Like, that's a really good idea. I'm just going to try and manifest the hell out of this. And then they're missing the commitment, the discipline and the focus and value in their diary. If you're not putting a value on this, you're not creating the time and space, you're never going to get it done. It is wishful thinking. So what separates those who get epic shit done is an epic calendar that no one gets to penetrate unless it's totally been filtered and very clear on what you want, why you want it, and does this. So here's one of my favourite questions. Is this going to move me towards my top three one-year goals? Is this going to move me towards those top three one-year goals? Now, I don't say that when I'm about to play ping pong with Tom, like today. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like, I'm not sure if I can play ping pong for the next 20 minutes like I've committed because it's not really moving me towards, right, this much income. Does this make sense? I've predetermined when it's mama bear time in my schedule. Okay. I've predetermined it because it's one of my highest values is to be a loving and connected and fully present mom who's also super fun. So I've got a personality around that and she's already scheduled and the kids know when they can expect her and make full use of her. Does it make sense? I'm referring to her in the third person because I'm not in mum and bear mode right now. Does it make sense? I'm wearing a different hat which is a coach hat of I really want my total outcome is that one of you starts to, at least one, hopefully all, starts to think about your diary is the difference between where you are now and where you want to be. You've got the ideas, you've got the goals, you've got the wishes, you've got, you've got the vehicle, you're all in juice plus, like this is the vehicle. You've got the vehicle. It's laid out in front of you. You've got the personal development. You've got the training. You've got the mentoring. You've got the product. You've got the community. You've got the system. The difference, why are some people like on rocket fuel in the same vehicle and some, you know, are spinning their wheels? 
It's all, it's all in here. Do you get that? It's not, oh, they've got this special plan or they're on that team or they've got this or they've got... No, no, no. It's all in here. Is everyone with me? Okay. So with our remaining time, I'm going to give you another eight hours condensed into the next 25 minutes. But you've all got to be really excited. Some of you look like, I don't even know, maybe you're frozen. No, there's a little bit of you moving. Okay. Okay, Bronwyn has brought it for everyone. Louise, close second. So, my life got so much better when I started to own my diary and schedule and calendar. Suddenly, all the things that I used to say, I don't have time for that. I'm overwhelmed. I used to say those things all the time. So, I changed the story and I changed the strategy. The story that I came up with that I don't want to schedule, I like flying by the seat of my pants, had reached its expiry date. Remember when I said that you just have to get sick of your own BS to change something? Threshold? I was definitely at threshold with my own calendar because I saw some examples of people living their best life in a beautiful state and not really affected by all the other stuff swirling around them. And I wanted to be more like that. Does that make sense? Now, it was not about money. I would see some teachers. There's two teachers at our kids' school who just, they're always happy. They're just unshakable. They are just so present, content, and in a joyous state that I'm like, I want to be like that. I, hell no, I don't want to be a teacher. Gosh, no. But I want to be like them. Does this make sense? This is why I knew that I wanted to um, grab a hold of that part of me that had the disempowering beliefs and, and, and the disempowering story that I couldn't be and choose joy for most of my life. Does it make sense? So do you have that? Do you, if you've got that desire, and you're tired of your own BS about why you can't be where you want to be, and you, you know some of the stories in between, but you're actually really ready and determined to change it. Your calendar, your schedule, your clarity, and you standing guard of it is going to be the most important work you'll ever do. And it's going to take you 12 months. It's going to take you 12 months to understand its art and science. It's going to take you 12 months to develop an unbelievable habit around it. It's going to take you, um, it won't take 12 months for you to see the results though. It'll just be a few, it'll be a few weeks and months, which is really exciting. But this stuff is life changing. To me, it's the most exciting work on the planet. So here's my version. Tony Robbins takes, I'm not kidding, 23 hours of content. Tony is yapping away on a program called, now I love Tony, but he really yaps away in this. It's called um, RPM, the time of your life. And it's amazing. But he just doesn't stop talking in it. And I know that I feel like I'm talking too much here, but believe me, I'm condensing 24 hours into 30 minutes for you right now. Okay, so here's how I plan my week. You must have your top three one-year goals right there in front of you. That excites you. That is jump out of bed stuff. If you don't yet have that, just raise your hand. Let me see. Okay, so there's Jody, Lee, Sarah, who else? Okay, awesome. Most of you are ready to rock. So what I want to make sure of Sarah and Jody that we get you, um, I've got lots of recordings of the goal setting session and the wheel of life, but it's time for you to, to do that. Yeah. And let's make sure that um, you receive a recording. I'll send the list to Joel and maybe some of you just want a refresher. You just like look at your goal and you're like, I'm not jumping out of bed for that. Maybe it's not quite the right one. There's a very, very specific process that's like um, you being, Walt Disney. 
you've got to take out all your limiting beliefs and be in a state of magic, right? To really, really hear part of why you're here and what you're destined for. I'm getting all hot. I've got to open the window because it's so exciting, this part. It's so exciting, this part. Okay. So I get so clear on those top three one-year goals and then I also know, well, who do I need to become? Which part of me do I need to make a big priority? What's missing that if I add it in like a special ingredient, like, a, like my secret sauce, if I bring this in, it's going to be like strapping like a rocket ship to my back to get to that goal further faster. So, for instance, some of you wrote, you know, QSSC, something like that. What's the one thing that if you added it to your list of values, like your super value, that if you really begin to embody this and think about it and remember a time when you had that before in your life and you literally start acting as if every single day. So, for instance, um, some game changer values for me in the past has been fun. That just really changed things up when I started really building a team because I was so darn serious. No one, wanted, I was too stressed out. No one wanted to join that. The next one that changed everything when I was still playing small and I knew it was bold. Boldness, just like what would bold do right now? If I was insanely bold, like, what would I actually do? How would I show up? How would I do it differently? Um, courage, intelligence, flexibility have all been really big ones that have changed the game for me. Disciplined was a really big one. So I do this assessment at least every 12 months, but usually every six months. Make sense? So find one of those ingredients and values. And then what you're going to do is sit down and here's the, the how-to part that you've been waiting for. Every Sunday night, if I haven't done it on Friday, I do it by Sunday. Every Sunday night, I do a capture list. And a capture list is all the things that are rattling around in my head. And there's a lot. There's lots of shoulds. There's lots of hopes, wishes, dreams, desires. And there's my top three one-year goals over here. And now who do I need to become? What has to happen to make it happen are the two big questions. And who needs to be in the driver's seat? Who do I need to become? What has to happen to make it happen? And who needs to be in the driver's seat for this part of the day? Make sense? So the capture list, what I do for, takes me about 10 minutes. I, I always start a new fresh page and I write as quickly as I can everything that I can think of that, that I want to um, do, be, have, create over the next few weeks. Now, you can imagine some things are A, B, C and D priority. The A, B, and C nearly always get done. The Ds, if something slips because it's art and science, it's 80% is amazing. Remember how I said it's really going to take you about a year to perfect this? You're not going to nail it straight off. It's really like a whole new person who is mastering their time. But once you know how to master your time, well, now you can do it for the rest of your life and you will achieve things that you never have thought that you could possibly do because now you believe and you act different to everyone else around home. Makes sense? So it's worth it. It's worth creating this muscle and it's very hard to begin with because it's new. So my whole thing is if it's fun, how do I make it fun and how do I see results? Because I find it very hard to stick to things if I don't see some results. Anyone else like me? Okay. So you do the capture list and every single thing that you can think of that's swirling around that you should do, you write it down on a piece of paper. I should 
be a good craft mum and go to Spotlight and do that order for that's thirty percent off for the next two days. I need to go and buy a hundred bucks worth of craft stuff, you know, and throw it in the craft room there and schedule some crafting time with the kids. Make sense? Now the coach hates crafting. Hates it. Messy. Not living my best life. Not making me money right now. But Mama Bear loves craft completely different part of me, completely different person that I put in the driver's seat and I schedule her ahead of time. Is everyone with me? Can you see where I'm going with this? Do you know how much more efficient it is when you sit down and you're going through your day, you look at the day ahead, you're already visioneering how it's going to go. Yep, I'm going to be coached there. I'm going to make that call when I'm driving there. And then I'm going to have lunch. And then it's like morning tea with the kids. And then right, you see how the day is going to go. And the right part of you is going to show up in the different sections of your day. Would you agree you wear many hats and you have many different roles? This is about understanding that and using that to the very best knowledge that you can. Okay. Now, when I'm chatting on the phone with mum and I'm being in relation, relationship connection time, if mum tries to call me and I'm in the middle of like being the coach or the leader, mum is the most annoying person in the world. Does it make sense? Oh my God, there's mum. She thinks that I play on a machine all day. Does she not know that I work? I'm a worker, right? But if I call mum when it's pink relationship time, mum's going to get calm, centred, present daughter who's actually listening to all of her stories for the hundredth time because that's what mum loves to do. Make sense? I'm, I'm in a different state. I'm a different person because... I know what I'm like in the middle of the day. I'm, I'm just, I'm in a different machine mode. But when it's kid time, it's kid time. That's it, phone in the drawer, totally present with the kids. Now this morning, I, we broke our own rules because we were just in, deep in a conversation about something very important. And one of the kids came in and we were 21 minutes overdue for morning tea break. Well, there were some hangry little people out there, like really hangry. And we had to switch really quickly from this to, okay, we can't talk about that anymore. So sorry, guys. You've been amazing all morning. You kept away. You followed the rules. Now it's our time. Now what are we going to do at 2.30 when it's too time again? Does that make sense? I don't have a transition of the hats. Desmond, I used to, but what I found was um, my toughest time of transition, and I used to, I used to have the same trouble um, when I lived in, when I worked in corporate, is I would go in and I, it would just be like get the armor on and just go like smash people all day, and it wasn't me, and I didn't like it and enjoy it, and then I would come home and it would take hours to get back to me, where I could just be calm and quiet and playful and back to being the woman that James wanted to marry, right? And yet now I can swap really quickly because I try, I, I'm very intentional about it. So remember when I said it takes a year? It does. It does. So now I don't need to be so structured about it. I've got a lot more flow in there just to answer your question. There. So, um, capture list, write down every possible thing you can think of, including the stuff that you never get around to. French lessons, nude painting, rollerblading, you know, doing honeypot diving with the kids, climbing trees, setting up a treasure hunt. Um, you know, what are all the things that you want to do that are just going to give you joy? Remember, this is where values come in. What's going to give you joy? What's going to give you happy? What's going to give you peace? What's going to give you connection? What's going to give you pride? Discipline. Make sense? So you write all of that down and then the next most important thing is we group the like activities together. 
action. And what you're starting to form is categories for life. It's like when you move house and you, you, um, the, you write on the box, this goes to, you know, front lounge or office. It not it so much easier to move in when you know where all the boxes go? So every time something comes in the door, yep, go up there, mate, thanks. And that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. This is what you're doing for your life. Here's finances. Here's the category of wealth mastery because I'm a wealth wizard. So every time that we sit down to look at the wealth mastery of our masterpiece life, which we schedule for one hour every two weeks now, and it's blue, and we know what we're going to go through at that time to be on the same page. We just made decisions this week based around that time that's scheduled. Make sense? Not reactive, not, oh my God, what are we doing? We've been expecting winter, winter is coming. Tony's had us shitting our pants about winter's coming for the last three years. So James and I have been ready for winter. Winter meaning a big global event that is gonna massively change up how everyone's living and earning and spending money. Make sense? So now we can be fluid and flexible because we've been expecting it. And my husband and I now wasn't always this way, I promise. We've almost never been on the same page financially. Right? So this was intentional. How to get on the same page financially. Once you are, it's amazing. And everyone deserves it. All of you deserve clarity around your finances. Money goes to where it's most appreciated and organized. If your money isn't organized and you're not appreciating it and you're always, I'm always broke and I'm always this and I'm always that, that has to flip around. I mean, how's the only, how, what's the only way it's gonna flip around? Awareness, clarity, schedule it. What has to happen to make it happen? So I become, instead of a financial disaster, I'm a financial master. What has to happen for me to not only be good at finances, but be great? So I'm actually teaching others a year from now on a Zoom about how amazing I am at financial wizardry. Does this make sense? That's what I had to do with time. My story was so bad on it. Makes Now it's my favorite thing to teach. Your void drives the values. Remember I said that? The mess becomes the message. The thing you resist persists and the thing that you avoid the most is your greatest adventure if you choose to open it. Yeah. So you write it all down and then, because I like things to be fun, I colour code it. Now there's art and science. Some of you are going to use Google Calendar, my calendar, we're going to use old fashioned, you know, planners. For the first year, I used, um, uh, you know, a big, a, a big book and I would colour code, you know, it would have each hour in a diary and I would go and highlight what had to happen in that hour. So what you've done so far, you capture everything you can possibly think of. Um, speak, to, speak to the draft person about renovating. Um, doing a podcast finally for heart driven women, doing, um, you know, getting your Instagram story, IGTV up or your followers, getting your whatever. Everything that's on there, you're then going to assess and look at it. You're going to put the like things together. If you're making a bunch of phone calls or you're online shopping, Grocery shopping, remember I said, you know, Spotlight's got 30% off, better get the kids' craft pack for that. Um, I better call the guy to come and fix the sprinklers. I better call. So I've got major categories, which are basically the house. But running the house doesn't sound good. So you've got to, like, pimp it up. You've got to be, you've got to make it like domestic diva, you know, Martha Stewart, queen, you know, like house goddess where everything flows and I'm so organized, right? You name these categories and give them a color 
and you group all the things that belong to your highly functioning, organized, sparkling, clean, incredible sanctuary that you call your home. Make sense? And in there is online Woolworth shopping because some bloke goes and chooses everything from the shelf. He puts it in his truck. He drives it to your front door. Well, he used to come in and leave it on the bench, but now he just has to, no, well, now he doesn't come at all. So I'm definitely struggling going out to the supermarket and being like a Martian weirdo with everyone else. But pre-isolation, <laughs> they, they would leave it in on the bench. I've just saved myself five hours for the week. How many? Five hours. How much are you worth per hour? How much money did you just reinvest back in your life? Five hours just by doing online shopping because someone else is paid to do that. Do delegate dump. You take inventory. You look at everything on your list. Is this making you money right now? Why is this on the list? Our parent, you know, I'm the parent rep. Well, I don't want to be the parent rep. Why do I still do that? Well, because I think that that's what good mothers should. No, I hate being the parent rep. They're all whinges. Nothing ever happens. I can't stand it. I'd rather be a bad mum than the parent rep. I'm going to be a good mum over here when I play ping pong uninterrupted. And so you just like, leave, gone, suck it, it's gone. Do delegate, dump. So many things on your list need to be dumped. They're not adding value. They're like a purple cow that you just keep doing it for some reason because someone said it's a good idea and it just doesn't work. Always, every week, be taking inventory. Why do we still do this? Is this making us money right now? What's the purpose of this? You know how far ahead of everyone else you're going to be if you literally just did that every week of your, list of, your normal list of things to do? Is this landing? You getting it? So capture, group, name, colour code. Color codes, how I like to do it, because it makes it fun. So then at a glance in my calendar, whether it's written out or in my Google calendar, there's default colors. You can set up your categories and colors however you like, right? Green is like, you know, Vitality Vixen. That is everything that's to do with wellness for me and my family, right? order the detox juices, um, uh, go to my energy worker, uh, do meditation, you know, read the kids out, you know, their meditation card. Anything that's to do with health and well-being is green, right? Domestic diva goddess, the, the cleaner schedules, you know, the house things that need, you know, the fish tank guy, all of that, okay? Yes, mine's been digital for the past few years, but I started out on those paper diaries and I love them and I still got them because I can look at how much, how far I've come, yeah? So capture and then chunk, called chunking, such a good word. Chunk the like things together. Evaluate them and then if they make the grade and they're moving you towards your top three one-year values and goals and you're living your best life, they get to stay. And then the most important thing is you must write a time chunk beside it. You go through everything and it's like, okay, call the fish tank line or delegate it to James. Make sure that it's going on his list. I do a lot of that. <laughs> there's boy jobs and there's girl jobs at our, at our house. Fish tank, I told him I don't want anything to do with that thing. That's all yours, buddy. So I will give him some nudges and reminders of fish tank kind of things. Make sense? And with the garden, same with quite a few things. He also does all the kids' sport and all the kids' teeth. I can't believe how much teeth takes up. It's ridiculous. I do dogs because I love dogs. Does this make sense? We literally, it's like you have your job. And you are 100% responsible for that. So if the dogs are still unkempt, you know whose fault it is. Me. <laughs> so you chunk the things together and then this is where the magic happens. Stick with me. You go and put that half hour somewhere in the next week 
or two weeks or three weeks. I don't generally do too much outside of three weeks. If it's not urgent and important, it gets done in the next week, uh, 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 you know, week two or week three. Some things that are just like a wish, they just keep popping up and rolling through. I never quite put it in there. But I like to keep it in orbit. <laughs> Does it make sense? So some will be, I like half hour chunks. Some of them you're going to say, okay, for me to do um, the grocery shopping, now I have to go out and get in my car, put the hand sanitizer on, and keep my distance from everyone. It takes a long time. Um, but I have to schedule it. Right? Number two. Once you've put in your most important and urgent, then you get to the nice to do. And that's where some things for me are three, four, five weeks away. But here's what begins to happen. You see when you schedule, now I'm not hyper-scheduled. I don't have every minute of every day allocated. That, that was my fear that I thought that that would have to happen. What well, if I don't want to do spin class on Thursday? I don't do it. I have green, vitality, wellness. Sometimes that could be having a cup of tea, reading a magazine, because that's really good for me and my wellness. That's what I did tonight. There's pink in there, self-love. Rituals for me. I never valued, valued myself or loved myself enough to actually schedule time for me doing a joy menu, doing the things that I love. Now, guess what? My kids are growing up seeing me do that and they respect that and guess what they've started doing? Right? There are little mimics. Okay, so I'm going to finally stop talking and open up for questions because I can go on and on and on about this, but it's art and science. There's nothing perfect. You just have to get started. Okay, so my personalities, mama bear, coach, leader of leaders, um, there's the creative person, there's, um, what's the other major ones? I, I said mama bear, there's wifey. Wifey is every night, it, it's getting later and later, but probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock when everything else is done and the kids are all finally done. Then it's James and I connection time. Right, that's, that's his and my time when we're not playing another role and I'm fully present and he can be fully present. Very important. Yeah? And date nights and you schedule all those things. Yeah? Okay, questions? None, I've stunned you. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you on about? <laughs> Do you have a max of how many colours? No, no, you can make your life a rainbow. This is make your life a masterpiece. No, absolutely. Um, it's, it's definitely something I played with a lot. Okay, and I went from paper and then at the start I couldn't stand digital. I tried to go there straight away, um, but I, I would take too many shortcuts. So you capture chunk right prioritize uh, give the time next to it and then input it into that next week now imagine lots of things are recurring like mesh training calls 7 30 monday night zoom code it's in there it's in there for the year boom that sucker goes all the way out is it a high paying activity sure only if you take an action from what you learn so if you don't schedule your scheduling time, you're not going to do it. Then tonight's been a complete waste of time and you're never going to get this hour back. That's not good. So my first question is, when are you going to schedule your first fun scheduling session? Change your story and change your life on your belief about time and what you're deserving of. and what emotions you can choose to feel every single day. You don't have to wait till you get a boat or a promotion or a big figure in your bank account. 
you can be happily achieving your masterpiece life on the way. It takes away guilt. That's a great, important point, right, Christine? Because it's like when you're with the kids, you're not then going, I should be on a three-way call. I should be answering this message. I should be something else. It takes away all your shoulds because you've already created your list of shoulds and you've been very um, strategic on what actually makes the grade and what's just imagined. It's super freeing. It, it, this, you've got so much spare time, you won't believe it. Helps you say no to lots of things. Exactly. Um, someone, you know, uh, someone says, can you come and, you know, do this? Can you record this thing? Can you come and do this? Can you come and do that? And if you get to fit it in and you've got flexibility, then you can say, yes, that's a good thing. You know what? Contribution? Yes, I've got room for that. So there's lots of flexibility. That's what I was scared of. When starting out with your time, do you guess and just adjust? Absolutely. Right? And I always overestimate. So I'm constantly like impressing myself with, okay, I've put half an hour to make three phone calls. I'm going to do it in 10. Then I'm just going to loll about for 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? It's actually really fun to see how productive you are when you sit in the driver's seat and choose. It's actually really fun. If you get the high paying activities done in the morning, absolutely. How far ahead? Um, some people do the whole year. Scott Harris, for instance, he's got spreadsheets and holidays booked for 10 years. I'm not even kidding. I do not work in 10 year chunks. I feel very impressed with myself that I've got anything next January in my diary. So that's personal. You know, art and science. This is your masterpiece life to design. There's no perfect way. There's no good, bad, right and wrong. This is you designing your life. It's so exciting. What else? Who's actually going to try this? You've got to do it for more than three or four weeks. And with all the life changes for me over the past few weeks, I felt like being in a spin and going nowhere. Absolutely, because every because you're in you you can get into reaction. We can get into um, and then people you just you're in the spin car. You're not like getting out of the spin car, going this is where I want to go and this is why and take control, take charge, take control, or else everyone else is going to. If you don't have your vision, everyone else is going to give you their vision. If you don't have your focus, everyone else is going to give you theirs. Like it's stand guard or like a warrior of your time, what, what passes for your mindset, um, of your values, and what doesn't fit in that, you release and you get so good. It's, as Joel said, and, and Christine, when you do this, it's so freeing because it, a million things will pass you there. And you're just like, no, 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 no. You become so darn good at no. And I don't explain anymore. I don't need to explain. No, thank you. I probably, I, I probably won't be able to meet your deadline, so it's a no. I'm like Simon Cow. It's a no from me. It's a no. No, no, no. And every time that you do that, you're saying yes to you. You're saying yes to the things that matter the most, the people that matter the most, that you designed with clarity and awareness of how you want to be living your life. You, you literally, it's like taking, gathering control, it's tentacles everywhere, gathering it all back up and saying, I'm, I'm in charge of all of this again. I'm the master of my domain. Daily, daily dairy is a great idea. Daily diary, maybe that's gonna be dairy, dairy diary. I will probably use spreadsheets with type of customers in colors like racing community 
or linked and Facebook. Okay, cool. Galaxy, totally get that. Um, such an empowering word, one seldom used. Yes. Yes, Bronwyn, it's time for no. And do you think other people will respect your time differently when you do? You give something to a busy person, right? Be windswept and interesting and busy is how you are going to create a giant team. You got to be on to the next thing. Hey guys, I'm sorry, we got to go. I'm on to the next thing. It's my favorite thing to do on a three way call. Not sitting there convincing, pleading, come on along. No, no, no. okay. This was awesome. I'm so excited about the possibilities for you. I've got to go and um, be on another call to respect their time. So, yep, you're in great hands with whoever and off you go. So this gives you back your power and your power and posture are one of the most important things, especially when you're building business and you're building belief. You're valuing your time. Then you've got, let's just make this Juice Plus specific. You've got times allocated. Now, there's no way I would give people a link to all my time slots. That makes me break out in a cold sweat, just my link being out there that anyone could book at any moment. I would hyperventilate. But what I do is I have specific links, like the connection calls I'm doing each morning from 9 till 10. That's under my contribution banner, right? I'm not doing business on there. It's not about Juice Plus. It's not, it's not any of those things. It's because I'm going to set up my mind for the day. I might as well be doing it with other people who may not be doing that already. Does that make sense? So I cleared my schedule at least for the next few weeks because I feel like that's a good thing, but it's within my values. I decided to do it. Make sense? So yes, I've got a, a link that I send out so the speakers can book in and so they know their time zone and code and all that stuff that I don't want to be doing. Yeah? Then you're going to have a, a section in your diary for three-way calls. And you set the boundary with your team. I'm available on these times, on these days, for these reasons coaching calls i don't really do i just say my schedule doesn't allow for individual um calls right now i'd love to help you um in my experience this is a cut and pasted message in my experience there's several um you know there's there's several topics that people are challenged with share with me the topic that you're challenged with at the moment and I'll point you in the right direction. Once you've done those things, then we can book a 15 minute session and we'll see where else I could fill a gap. Almost no one comes back and needs the next thing. Does that make sense? See how and why it's 15 minutes? If they showed up on a 15 minute chat and they hadn't done the three things, I'm, I only ever had to do this a few times. Um, I would say, so what did you like the best from that? What have you actually put in place, you know, after you read this book, watch that thing, watch that thing. Everyone says to me, what are the three things? I don't know. It depends what they're stuck with. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If they're stuck with scheduling, give them my scheduling calls. If they're stuck with reaching out, give them the GoPro chapter, right? Give, give them three things so they participate in their own rescue, not come to just take your time to hear their windy story they don't really want to change does this make sense some of you are giving your life away so people can stay in their story and all they want to do is connect they just want to connect that's what group training and rituals are for okay this is a business you've got to treat it like a business that's the other part that my business changed it's not a big orphanage for lost souls it's a business People will respect your time when you respect your time. You don't owe anyone anything. Everyone is their own independent virtual franchise. That's all the story that you're telling yourself. 
That's how you can build a gigantic, independent, fired up team because you see them as empowered and successful and able right from the start. If you're saying that they need you all the time and you're reinforcing that story, then you're enabling them, not empowering them. Imagine if your answer to everyone was, mm, I'm not sure, I'm a distributor just like you. Tell me the answer when you find it. Can you post that in the group when you find what that is? Can you imagine? How different would your life be? I remember a specific call with John Hollowaddy asking him, I'm drowning in messenger, John. What do you do with all these messages? And he's like, uh, well, I don't answer anything for about two weeks. And then I eventually get back around to going, hey, did you solve this? Is this okay? And he said 99% of the time they're solved. And the one or two times, well, it's already passed. Or he says, and that's where I got that quote from. Well, I don't know. Like, good question. I'm a distributor just like you. Let me know when you find that answer. You're not the walking encyclopedia of how to. Everyone's got all exactly the same tools. Would you agree head office provide sufficient training to everything? There's the Juice Plus virtual office. There's the WikiHow. There's the training platform. There's the Facebook group. There's the Life app. <laughs> there's the, that's before you even get to a team group. Does this make sense? It's too much. What do you need to know? How do you hold yourself with external reactions if it's negative from other people? Some people you are, are going to have to get used to um, you valuing yourself at a different level. That's okay. Yeah, they might pout. They might get annoyed. They might go talk to others. And who's that going to be a reflection on? Some are going to be silently cheering and going, wow, if she can value her time, then maybe there's hope that I can do that too. Maybe I don't have to respond to people at 11 o'clock at night because she doesn't. So you come back to vision and purpose and mission, you reach far more people than trying to please a few. You serve the many, not a whingy few. The whingy few, the ones that you're thinking about that are gonna react poorly, they need retraining. You're always training people how to, how to treat you. So some people need retraining. You've got to stick to message. You're like a politician. I won't be doing that anymore. I'm sorry I let you down. That was a mistake of mine. I realised my mistake and this is how I need to move forward so I can continue to grow and expand and lead the way and show the way. Get rid of them. It's the quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> not just plus for you <laughs> you know that's my answer but <laughs> there's some people I'm just like no but believe me I used to beg them I used to beg them and bend over backwards and try and please and is this the real truth though are they ever going to be pleased have you ever pleased them in the past have you ever been able to do enough for them Maybe they threw you some crumbs and they're crumbs, I promise. You've got to stop eating crumbs. Stop that. Okay? You've got a giant heart. You've got a giant heart and you're going to, you are going to serve so many more people when you stop giving it away to everyone that asks. There's a very big difference, would you agree, between need and deserve. Everyone needs your time. Everyone needs their sob story heard. But only a few deserve it. And the, the, the leaders that I admire and respect the most really understand the difference between need and deserve. It's people who participate in their own rescue, two hands up. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we covered a lot. My God, it's an hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to shut up now, doll.
Thank you so much. That was uh, that felt like two amazing calls. I learned like learned so much, but that last bit, I'm like, I feel. I don't know if anyone else feels the same, but I'm on the transition to from one to the other. I haven't made it all the way there, but you might be able to, some of my team might be understanding they're getting sent to the Mike Ajabi site instead of me answering questions now. So they yeah. they can all Google. Yeah. Does Juice Plus contain gluten? Search search bar, three groups, and Google. Everyone. I mean, they're going to have to do this exactly the same as what you would. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, yeah, it's it, and I, what I think is that I wasn't serving them by teaching them to be dependent on me because then they're going to teach their downline to do the same. So I have to just make it easy for them to just go to a link and then they exactly. teach their team to go to It feels like good leadership, but not really in the long run because one is empowering and one is dis disabling. It's yeah. saying you're not capable of going and finding a basic answer and that this is complex and you need to constantly ask people. That's brilliant. Guys, I hope you realise how much this coaching is worth because I remember getting the time of your life 19-hour uh, version and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it took me, like I was listening to it on the way back and forth from work and it took me weeks. <laughs> your ears bleed. I'm just like, shut up, Tony. I love you, but shut up. To the point, dude. So, like, you've literally got thousands and if you if you implement this it's going to be possibly millions of dollars worth of value tonight so thank you so much linda i really really appreciate you thank you mesh you guys rock